It's time for the 360 round. I want to bring in our panel. Brad Dillman's with us, Chief Economist at RPM Living, and Krista Mayshore, real estate consultant and author of Sell 100 Homes a Year. Existing home sales released this morning, and you see that previously owned homes are sitting at 30-year lows. Um, I'd like first, uh, let's start with you, Krista, some of your thoughts on what's going on here. I think the news makes everything look a lot worse than it is, um, despite having the highest interest rates, you know, over the past two decades. If you look at it, we are not in a market of depreciation. We're actually in a market of deceleration, which means that homes are still appreciating. They're just not appreciating as the rates that we saw back from 2012 to 2022. So it's not as bleak as everyone says. Uh, in fact, in May uh, of, this, of this year, the U.S. median home prices was actually up from 5.1% from last year. So it's not as bad as the news makes it seem. Yeah, you know, there's pros and cons. People are out there looking, they're buying a lot of new homes. The home builders have been giving some better rates and um, some more flexible rates than some of the higher mortgage rates. Brad, some of your thoughts on some of the trends we're seeing. I mean, as we start to see some of these prints and home prices are hitting record highs. Yeah, on the existing uh, home sales side, right, we saw prices basically moving up on, on weak volume. Uh, we are seeing an uptick in listed inventory. A little bit of a different story on the new home sales side, right? There's 480,000 new homes for sale in the country right now. That's only been eclipsed by the you know housing bubble era uh, listed new home sale inventory. Uh, and, but yeah, also an increase in incentive activity by uh, uh, by the major builders. Uh, I think the National Association of Home Builders have reported a, you know, an increase in the proportion of home builders that were offering incentives. Uh, you listen to some of their calls, they're certainly still engaged in the rate buy downs and this kind of thing. I think that the builders would argue that basically we're getting to the point where basically the, the constraints and affordability you know, are starting to offset what had been a, a relatively limited uh, listed inventory, again, still quite limited by historical standards on the existing side. Uh, but on the new home sales side, it's actually quite large, but they're starting to see a little bit of an inflection in that where the on the affordability front, or perhaps it's really just the supply side is uh, a bit too low on affordability, a little bit too high on the supply side for new home sales. Look, you mentioned inventory, and we've seen inventory on the rise. Um, and so that should theoretically spark some moves. At the same time, Chris, I saw an article that said, is the, is the housing stalling, house sales stall in May? And, you know, where are we headed? Because does something have to give? We have more inventory, but you have these higher mortgages. You have high prices. What happens to home sales going forward? Can you can you sell 100 houses a year? <laughs> well, it's definitely slowed down a bit, right? We're seeing homes stay on the market a little bit longer. Sellers still have unrealistic expectations as far as what they saw. You know, I mean, the houses were increasing so fast. I mean, from one month to the next, you'd have the same home back in 2000 and, you know, 18, 19, 20, selling for 100,000 more. That's just not the case now. And the affordability of actually purchasing home is higher than it has been historically. And so it's really tough for buyers, right? Uh, a lot of people are waiting on the sidelines. There is still a massive pent up demand of, of buyers wanting to buy, sellers wanting to sell. So, I mean, it's still moving and shaking, just not quite as, as fast as people would like it. But this is, again, it's more of a realistic market, right? It's a much more realistic market. market. If you look at the absorption rate, um, of homes right now, we are still in a seller's market, believe it or not. And the inventory is anticipating to, um, you know, not go crazy, but the experts and analysts are anticipating over the next five years for home prices to continue to rise. Again, not at the levels we saw back from 2012 to 2022, but just more normal levels. We are actually in more of a normal market than people might know. Yeah, you look at there's been a lot of cash purchases. Cash is still king. I, I read um, accounting for 28 percent of sales. And there's also this disconnect for um, the homes that are under 250,000. Um, those sale prices have been a little weaker. The, the houses that go from 250 to 500 were up 1 percent. And those that were up that are, you know, hover around 750,000 to the million plus, those gain big time. So there's still, I guess, some hot areas or, you know, what's hot, what's not, right? Location, location, I don't know. Brad, I saw in the South, for example, those sales came down a little bit. That's right. Uh, the builders kind of reported some weakness uh, in Florida as well. And so I think 
we're going to get to a point here where this, of course, gets back to local market dynamics, right? We always talk about this in real estate, but if we do see this increase in listed inventory, right, it's come up a bit. It's still not enough yet to put downward pressure uh, on home prices, really. I mean, there is this, this disinflation or slowdown in home price growth. Uh, but what may happen in some local areas, right? Do we really get an uptick in listed inventory, you know, on the existing side and then perhaps at the same side, uh, same time on the new home sales side, right, where you've got this 480,000 uh, new home sales or new homes for sale. Do those is that coincident, right? Where you get an increase in existing inventory and these new home sales sounds kind of like something that might be happening in Florida that's putting a little bit of weakness there. Yeah. Do you think there's like a recession that could happen again? It was the first sort of group to go into recession. You know, we have this rolling recession from sector to sector. Brad, quickly, are we could we see a pause? A pause in what, the economy or a pause in, in housing activity? In sales and how they're happening because, um, you know, you still have activity, but you still have a lot of headwinds, high prices, high mortgage yeah, you, rates. You do, but I, I think the like the event horizon we're really working towards here is the election, right? And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of change in interest rate dynamics for one way or the other that may, that may affect the housing market. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, right, if we are seeing inventory listings start to increase, what if we end up with a decline in the 10-year Treasury rate, right? It's already come down since they announced uh, the taper uh, for the balance sheet reduction. If it goes down further at the same time that maybe we're getting rate cuts, we might end up with higher listed inventory and more affordable mortgage conditions, which really could increase activity. Yeah. But I think we're really going to have to yeah. see how and fiscal Chris, and monetary policy should work out. And Chris, uh, just final quick thought. I mean, uh, it's a wonderful asset to have. You still say how houses are holding their value. Final quick thought. Well, the NAR just recently did a study that the net worth of a homeowner is 40 times that of a renter. And, you know, if you look at from 2000, um, 2009 to 2019, the average homeowner actually made $19,000 a year in equity. And again, they are anticipating to continue to go up. So the news wants to scare us all. You know, it's really not that bad. And because of the lack of inventory, over the past decade, and not enough homes have been built to actually match and outlast the, how many, um, yeah. the actual population, which means that with inventory low and supply and demand, we are still going to see the housing market, in my opinion, and the experts and analysts okay. do really well. Yeah, and builder sentiment lowest since December. I wanted to add that in there. Brad Dillman, Krista Mayshore, thank you.